Numbers can mean different things depending on how they're used. He's a zero. She's a perfect 10. You're number one. I gotta go number two. High five. Everybody get out there and give 110%. So as statistics students, we need to know how numbers are used so that we have a way of thinking about their meaning. So first, let's see how numbers are used to represent qualities or things, what we call categorical data. Numbers can tell us three things. Names. Numbers can tell us which one. Which player was downfield on the pass? Number 78. Numbers can tell us what kind. Were you in the experimental group or the control group? You were coded as a number two, so you were in the control group. These naming numbers are often used with descriptive statistics. Order. Numbers can tell us what order. How did you finish the race? You came in number three. Numbers can tell us when. How long before we are seated? Well, we are fifth on the maitre d's list. These ordering numbers are also used with descriptive statistics. And amounts. Numbers can tell us how many. How many children do you have? How many pets? How many pictures on your phone? Numbers can tell us how much. How much space do all of those pictures take up? These amount numbers quantify the world and can be used for inferential statistics. Let's take a look at these descriptions of numbers in a little more detail. We are talking about measurement scales, or levels of measurement. The first level of measurement is nominal data. Nominal data are at a basic level. The number is used to name and identify. In fact, the word nominal means name. Examples of nominal data would include football jersey numbers, social security numbers, coding male equals one, female equals two, or your license plate number. Nominal data are not really on a scale. They're just a label. So we might code one equals Republican, two equals Democrat, three equals Libertarian, but we could just as easily have used pictures, like a donkey and an elephant, for all that the numbers tell us. Or we could use colors, like blue states versus red states. Nominal numbers are not comparable. If I told you that this person belongs to political party number four, you would have no idea what I meant unless you knew the coding scheme that I was using. And because the numbers have no meaning outside of their specific context, the number zero may exist, but it's still just a label. Zero does not mean anything. Nominal data are categorical data. Ordinal data are numbers used to convey order or rank. The word ordinal means order. And examples of ordinal data would be valedictorian status in class ranking, order of winners in a race, the finishing order of political candidates, most popular songs on top 40 radio, or Mohs scale of mineral hardness. In Mohs scale, harder minerals scratch softer ones, but it's not a measure of actual hardness. Like nominal data, ordinal numbers are not comparable. Coming in first place in the potato sack race is not the same as being valedictorian, or having a number one single, or being first place in real estate sales. Ordinal data do not have a zero point, or a zero place. Even if you don't finish the race, you don't come in zero place. There is no zero in ordinal data. Ordinal data are also categorical data. In the next video, I'm going to tell you about two more types of measurement scales, interval and ratio. Combined with nominal and ordinal, interval and ratio data make the acronym NOIR, 
N-O-I-R.